welcome to the Rumble Podcast. We're very excited that you all have tuned in to, to hear this very delightful conversation that we're about to have. My name is Tony. Um, I am the marketing director for Continuing Studies. And so we wanted to put this together to sort of shed some light on all the great opportunities that we have here at PFW. Um, some of our really fascinating uh, people who have graduated from some of our programs that are doing really great things in the community, as well as focus on some of our teachers and instructors who are so graciously giving up their time to help all of the wonderful people who want to take these classes to exceed and excel um, in whatever role it is that they want to do. Um, so I have with me here my co-host, Margaret Mo. Hello. And we've also got um, here live in the studio... We've got Bruce Haynes and Mike Hello. Ruiz. Hello. And these these two guys are the dynamic duo for um, our project management certificate program that will be uh, starting in April. In April. So, do um, you guys want to introduce yourself? Or sure. My name is Michael Reese. Um, I am the acting president of the Project Management Institute chapter of Northeast Indiana. I uh, co-teach the Project Management Certificate Program here at Purdue Fort Wayne with Bruce Hayes. Um, I have an MBA in IT management. Uh, I went to Michigan State University, which is another Go Big Ten school. <laughs> and and it's, uh, it's been a pleasure to teach this class, actually, as part of the continuing education program for the, the last few years. We've really had some great students come through. It's been a lot of fun. Um, Bruce? Um, I... Uh... Not the president of the chapter, but I am a uh, <laughs> member who likes to um, try to help the president whenever I can. And uh, he had mentioned earlier, as uh, we were warming up here, that uh, uh, some of the proceeds for this class actually go to support the local chapter of the Project Management Institute here in Fort Wayne. So uh, I am happy to be able to teach this class along with him, uh, knowing that uh, not only does it make a difference uh, for the chapter, but also for uh, a lot of the businesses that we have in uh, northeastern Indiana? I'm amazed uh, when we do our capstone review, what all is happening, what businesses are here in Indiana, and what uh, things that they are working on. That's the, uh, I think, my favorite part of the class is to find out what are people going to pick as their project, because that's one of the things that uh, you're required to do the first night is to start to figure out what it is that you're going to be working on throughout the entire uh, course. And uh, it, it uh, the uh, sky's the limit. We've had real projects and we've had imaginary projects, professional projects and personal projects, and they um, are all over the board. And uh, Mike and I both work at uh, Lincoln Financial Group, and uh, so I'm able to harass him here at work as well as uh, <laughs> here at work. <laughs> well, thank you for, for that intro, guys, and we are very happy and excited to have you here. Like I said, you have been affectionately known as the dynamic duo, so I almost feel like Margaret and I can just kind of sit back and let you guys run with it. Like, I want to know all about this class that you guys have, who should take it, and what can people who take it expect out of it? What kind of job or role is it going to prepare them for? Okay. So, so essentially um, what this class is, is it is a continuing education class, a project management certificate program class. And there are certificates that are offered for project managers, um, a, a number of them in, in anything from being a professional project manager, just which is the whole gambit of, of being a project manager to risk management, to understanding how to schedule, to understanding how to manage a budget. But what we're doing is we're offering kind of a, an entry, an entry level, kind of an entree of everything, all the skills that one would need to get into being a really effective project manager. There's a, there's a tool set, and that's what we give over the course of six weeks. Um, if five class weeks, then you get a week off to help prepare, and then you get that sixth week, which is a capstone. And that capstone is where you present all of the tools that you've been given right over those first five weeks and you pull them together in a single project how you would manage it how you would manage the people the 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 
the budget, how you would put things together. And those projects can be wide and varied. It can be something that you're actually doing at your current job, or it could be something like, you know, let's, let's build a house, you know, let's, let's remodel a kitchen. Let's, uh, let's tune up a car, you know, I mean, everything Start is, a business. Uh, yeah. Uh, wh- wh- like who, who is good for a project manager, uh, a management class? Everyone. Everyone. Because everyone does project management. You do it every day, right? Getting up out of bed and coming to Purdue Fort Wayne to do your job, right? That's a project. <laughs> it's a project. It <laughs> yes. can be a project every single day. <laughs> sure can be. So, so this is a, a five-week course? A six-week it's, course? It's a six-week course, okay. but we do it over seven weeks. So we do five weeks of lecture. We get one week off to allow you to prepare for that capstone, that final capstone. And then that capstone's on that sixth, that sixth class evening. And what happens as a part of that cla- capstone stone is we bring in project management professionals, folks who are part of that Northeast Indiana chapter of PMI, the Project Management Institute. These are people who, like Bruce and I, have been doing this for decades, right? We've been doing this project management gig for a very long time. Wow, here and, with us? Well, I mean, not well, not necessarily teaching right? okay. in, 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 this, in, in this place, but, but I mean, it, it professionally acting as project managers, and we've been doing it in different industries, different... Uh, it was, we've got people that work at Parkview. Bruce and I mentioned we work at a Lincoln Financial Group. There are folks that are at uh, Three Rivers Credit Union, for example. There are all these different project management professionals. What about rocket scientists? Uh, we've got it. We've got a rocket scientist. Yeah, our chapter was actually nice. started by a NASA nice engineer, popular, right? Yeah, wow. who who uh, who helped with the space shuttle program and helped, I think, with uh, Viking, which was the first the first Mars yes. mission. Yeah. yeah so, that. so it's really exciting stuff. And again, who who is this for? It's for everyone. Everyone that everyone that does anything in life. Hey, having a toolkit to do those things that you do every single day at work, even at play, it's an awesome thing. And it helps you become better organized. It helps you better understand exactly what it is that I could do. Kind of the science that that toolkit right behind just the day to day projects that people do um so so essentially what this is from a career standpoint why should you do this if you want to kick this off and do this as a career well for one thing it can be very lucrative it's it's something that i wish i would have started doing a lot earlier in my life um i i i come from a pretty wide and varied background when i when i went to school to get my undergrad my thought was i was going to coach football and soccer and i was going to teach high school it didn't work out that way. I ended up going to Teach America. Uh, I was in the south side of Chicago. I really enjoyed it, but it seemed like for me that first year out, I was 22, 23 years old, and I was teaching kids who were 17 to 18 years old. And it wasn't it wasn't a gap with anything more than just age. I felt like I was too close in age to them, right? So mm-hmm. it just didn't work out for me because I felt like I was a peer as opposed to being right. a mentor, yeah. right? right? So so I volunteered, I did that. That was my whole student teaching experience and I was soured by it because I felt like I wasn't seasoned enough myself. So I decided to do something different, make some money, which is for most undergrads and most people who are like pursuing grad a grad school education or even continuing education credits, hey, a lot of it's what's in it for me, right? And for most people, it's it's a transactional thing. Investing time to get a degree or to get a certificate, is there something in it for me? What can I pull out of it? And in some cases, it can be just that toolkit, right? But for this, it can be so much more because for for me, for my life, becoming a project manager and becoming a professional at actually doing these these short-term finite projects for different companies over the course of, geez, the last 30 years, right? I have found myself increasing my wage threefold. So when I first wow. got out, of, yeah, seriously, yeah, so, when I, when definitely, I, so definitely there's, there's a reason to do yes. this. And if you're doing a project management job right now and you're not certified, you'll find that getting um, one of these PMI certifications, like an industry standard certification, can actually increase your wage by 30 to 50 percent right wow. out of the gate. And there's, there are people are soliciting remote project managers they're they're soliciting people so it's not just in the metro fort wayne area you can you could get a job as a project manager you could live here and you could work here right but you can also manage these projects and and it, it can be a very very 
lucrative experience it can be very rewarding that sounds so, great like can i take your class <laughs> absolutely absolutely i like that you said um that this class is for anybody so like it is a non-credit course so that basically means you do not need a degree at all like you literally can just go online and sign up right it's we as easy try as to that. take the pressure off because it is a pass fail class um, it's lecture, but you're not expected to show up in a suit and tie and uh, be there exactly. A lot of people are professionals, so you may not get out of work on time to be exactly in your seat right on time. And uh, because of that, the class is going to start without you and you'll get caught up. But uh, we try not to be too uptight about it. And uh, we do make the class fun, I believe. Whether we our try. students agree or not, <laughs> we try to make the we class try. fun. And it is one of those things that whether you want to be a project manager or not, you are and you have been. And it's, um, I think even if you just work on a team as a member of a project, it's good to know what the project manager does. But, right. you know, planning a wedding is one of the biggest projects people put on and you don't realize uh, the organizational skills required to do that. <laughs> Putting on an event, same thing, you know, um, you know, being a member of a nonprofit board of directors, you often are doing projects without even realizing that they are projects. So there's a lot that you can do with these skills, even if you decide not to call project management your career. Right, that's good. Um, just uh, looking at my notes here, it shows that I, I got a couple of testimonials from, from some of your students. Okay. <laughs> um, and then one that kind of just triggered me off with what you said was, the instructor has made it fun and engaging while still teaching us a lot of valuable skills. So I think you kind of just touched on all of that, which sounds really cool. One of the things that I want to know is, so we say project management like it's just a normal everyday term, but it's not. And for a lot of people, I don't think that they know like what kind of, like what's a project? What kind of project does this mean? Like we're getting like Lincoln logs and we're stacking them up or we're gluing uh, popsicle sticks or like what kind of project are we are we building carburetors and and doing habitat homes or so bruce what is a project <laughs> most of what you said <laughs> <laughs> producing the lincoln logs is operations that's what the business does they create lincoln logs you do that over and over and over again that's what people go in every day to do projects are what do you do with those lincoln logs what are you going to do <clears throat> that's a one-time effort assemble those logs to make the, I don't know, the Taj Mahal out of Lincoln Logs, something like that. That'd be pretty impressive. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. So a project is something that's just a one-time endeavor. Okay, just and a one and done. It has a defined start and a defined ending, right? So, so if you're doing the design, right, of a car component, that would be the project because you're designing a car component. You're maybe setting the press up. You know, you're you're setting up what what would constitute actually creating that part or that element for the car. But the replication of doing the thing that you've designed, right? Then that becomes operations. So so the project is that finite piece, right? Where you're 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 setting that thing up, right? That you're going to replicate and put through as an op. Exactly. Well exactly. said. So I want to know what's been your, your favorite project that maybe you, you helped to supervise or that you've completed yourself? I have a hard time picking favorite projects because I've been doing projects for too long. Um, I mean, just long enough. I mean, not <laughs> long enough. Um, one of the largest projects I ever was on was to uh, stand up a um, general ledger system uh, at, a, at, a, at a major uh, Fortune 250 company. And uh, it was something they had worked on for years and didn't were failing and repeatedly failing. And uh, they brought in a, a slew of new people to work on it. And we had uh, somewhere between 35 to 40 project managers working on standing up an accounting system uh, because of all the impacts it has to other systems within an organization. So uh, I found that one was uh, fun. Uh, and it was uh, exhausting, uh, and it took uh, about two and a half years to get that done, even with uh, that many project managers, each project manager leading a team of somewhere between seven and 50 people. Wow. So uh, it was a huge endeavor. I do tend to like projects that are longer in length, um, just because you get to know the people 
you get to know the um, you know the 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 wing nuts on the inside of the in, of the design a little bit more. <laughs> uh, when things go wrong with the wing nuts, you are more familiar with it as opposed to. Um, I've also managed um, you know. Um, uh, half a dozen or more projects at one time that tend to be smaller. But because those are, um, you, because you're working with different teams and very different subjects quite often, it's hard to get to know them as well. Mm -hmm. uh, it feels more like I'm managing a list of tasks versus uh, making this a labor of love for years and years of, right. uh, on. But uh, we did have, I'll let you answer, and then I'm going to go back to somebody who's a student of ours whose uh, project I, I dearly loved. Okay, okay, my favorite project. Well, f um, let me give you a quick uh, preface this this whole favorite project idea because it's funny. Project management, generally speaking, is not something that you set out to do. And we're trying to change that because we think that it would be better if, if one chose to do this, right, as opposed to falling into it. It seems like 90% of the people, maybe more, that uh, that I've met that are project managers have fallen into this you're voluntold to do something, right? Or you volunteer to do something at a, at a, at a job, and like, I'm gonna do this thing. And then because you do it well, now you start getting all these little short-term projects. You become the go-to person for all these short-term projects. Mm -hmm. And that's how I started. That's how this happened for me. I was um, actually, I was managing Teamsters um, at, at Coca-Cola Bottling Company of Michigan. And, and I was living in Metro Detroit at the time. And it was the largest little postage stamp of, of territory for Coca-Cola Bottling. And I was, I, I knew how to drive a truck. I had to have a CDLA, right? So, so I, would, I would drive truck, you know, sometimes. And, and it was that was fun. I, I really loved driving a, an 18 wheeler. It was a lot of fun. So <laughs> one of the things that I did was is I helped them redo all their routing. And it was on an old AS400, which is a mainframe. And it's like for, for those of you who are too young to understand before there was a time before Windows and there was a time before <laughs> little computers sitting on your desk. Right. I mean, I remember when laptops were brand new. Boy, those were cool. You know, so <laughs> and, and it, it's, it's really interesting because because they were these huge mainframe computer systems and they were very arcane and very arduous and all this crazy stuff and what we were doing is we changed the route for all of the different routes for the largest little area for coca-cola bottling in the entire of all, the entirety of north america because it's it and it said so it was a swath that took about uh, i'd say half of southeastern michigan and it included half of the city of Detroit going all the way down to the state line, right, of, of Ohio. And it went all the way over um, to a, a, a U.S. road, which actually intersected with Ann Arbor. And if you know much about geography and if, or if you're looking at it on a map right now, you're you know, listening to me and you're looking at your phone, it's like it's huge. It was, it was probably a million people right, or a million and a half customers. Wow. And so, so it was hundreds of routes. And we redid this on this, this mainframe. And I am an IT project manager, as is, as is Bruce. So uh, I've done other things before, you know, as far as like industrial projects project management and everything. But that was the beginning, how I got felt. I, I was sort of falling into the whole project management gig. So fast forward a few years. Um, I'm no longer working at Coca-Cola. I'm working for the city of Detroit and the county of Wayne, again, in, in Detroit. Most fun that I ever had on a project management was I worked on Comerica Park and Ford Field, which oh, is where the Detroit Tigers awesome. and the Detroit Lions play. I worked on getting all their computer systems, all their audio visual stuff. I helped get it, you know, we helped wire it, we helped pull it together. And I watched those two structures rise from just dirt, holes in the cool. ground. And it was fascinating, it was so exciting. And, and as a part of um, whenever an NFL team gets a brand new stadium, and for those of you who are Colts fans, you know that when Lucas Oil was brand new, they were promised a Super Bowl. Same thing happened with Ford Field. We were promised a cold weather Super Bowl. and. Another companion project with that was I got a chance to do something that had happened with no other sheriffs or police department to that point. All those brand new laptops, those tough books from Panasonic, we wired them using cellular telephony and we had something that most most police police officers, most uh, most uh, uh, first responders didn't have at that point, which was full 
connectivity via wireless cell towers. It was the first, it was like the first Wi-Fi, like 2G, 3G Wi-Fi. Nice. And, and we had to have that, right? Because it was, we had to bring these people up into the 21st century so that they could do security for, for a Super Bowl. And it was so cool because I had, I had a chance to do ride arounds with, uh, with the sheriff's departments and, and, and a few FBI groups and everything, because we actually, you know, we were, they were adjunct to what we were doing. It was really exciting stuff and very cutting edge too, because a lot of that, a lot of that tough book stuff was, was, I mean, it was very, they're like, they're like hardened. You could use them to stop a bullet. You know, it's like Iron Man stuff, right? I mean, <laughs> they were really, really cool laptops and they were, and we mated them up and it's funny because now, you know, if you've ever seen those cop shows and everything, it's, they're ubiquitous. You see these laptops and screens and everything, but back then it was brand new and it was something that hadn't been done before. So the excitement for me with project management is sometimes as a man, as a project manager, there's nothing, it's never the same, right? You're always given a new project or something different to do, which can be exciting sometimes and other times, oh my gosh, <laughs> you know, we're doing something daunting. completely, yeah, daunting, very daunting because it's something that we've never done before. So that I think is the thrill for me. And that, and if that appeals to you as a potential student, right? Or if that, that whole concept of doing something different, you know, every periodically, every six months, every year, every, every three months, you know, that's what we do. We do different things. We do new things. And sometimes they can be very exciting. Sometimes it's like, boy, I'm glad this ends soon because I'd like to get out to the next <laughs> one, you know? So, and it, and it, it it's, it's all kind of part and parcel to it. But yeah, I think my favorite projects were those ones where we did something that no one had done before and and we were a part of something special so that was that was really fun for me that's really cool it's like you can take this one certificate and turn it into an entire career that's really cool. it can be foundational and that's one of the things that's exciting too about about each one of these nights that we have with this cert, with this cert class is that the sessions, I mean, we, we talk about the fundamentals. We talk about what constitutes a project, um, how you could deal with things like change, um, how you deal with cost management with a budget, how you schedule your resources. Um, some of the most exciting class time that we have is when we talk about communication and how you manage the resources because that's a soft skill that I've got to tell you, I've learned so much about dealing with people and about communicating with folks I've never met before yeah. and learning where there's points of commonality, learning to leverage the differences and, and build teams. And that kind of goes back to what I originally thought I would do for a career is I wanted to be that coach, right? Well, as a project manager, I found a path to being a coach and I coach every day. It's yeah. exciting. Yeah. That's really cool. And I'm assuming that, you know, to be able to um, be an effective project manager, you've got to be able to communicate with all these people. Because like you said, uh, Bruce, you could be dealing with seven to 50 different people and that's seven to 50 different personalities. And 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 you've still got a goal that you've got to make. Not just, <clears throat> not just personalities, but communication styles. Yeah. Because the way you yeah. tell one person something isn't going to work telling the same thing to somebody else isn't going to work. You have to uh, adapt your style to what they need. Um, one of my favorite projects that we had in the class, it wasn't somebody who was going to be a project manager. It wasn't an accidental project manager where it was uh, your career was foisted upon you. Uh, it was a uh, father who was going to restore a car with his uh, son. I think his son was eight years old at the time. And uh, this man put more into uh, the project portfolio than I think any of the other students I've seen. Uh, he was restoring uh, the car that his uh, mother had proposed to, or his father had proposed to his mother in. Oh, wow. Uh, oh. Yeah. Back in those days, that had to be he proposed to her. Okay. <laughs> so, um, but uh, it wasn't just that it, he found the, you know, hey, this is what they, you know, this is what they dated in. This is the car they kept forever. Uh, got rid of it, I think, when he was, um, you know, uh, was elderly and unable to retire. Um, he actually found the car with the same VIN number oh, wow. and was going back to restore that car after so dad cool. had passed. So it was going to be a project where he could teach his son how to uh, work with mechanical stuff, period, uh, in addition to learning how to uh, restore a car and then give this present to his mother as to, hey, does this bring back any memories, Mom? Wow. Oh. That's a really cool project. That's really so that special. was a labor of love. So mm -hmm. he put I, I, everything, you know, if there was, you know, there's three different ways to do this document, he'd do all three of them. 
because he it was it was a labor of love. It was very passionate for yeah. him. It uh, wasn't. Um, yeah, one of the things we talk about in our class is that not everything is appropriate for everything. So we try to teach you what the tools are so that you can go lead the class tonight and be able to apply these things when you work, go into work tomorrow. Um, but that uh, you have to pick and choose which tools are correct for each project as each one is unique, completely different. Uh, sometimes uh, there's a couple of things that are going to be there for all projects, but most of them you need to pick the tools that fit for the, fit the project, and that's what we're trying to teach you here. Well, this person wanted to use every single thing in every single format that he probably could come up with, whereas uh, I, as a PM, am more interested in finding out what's the minimum amount of documentation <laughs> necessary to get the yeah. team to make this project, project a success. Awesome. I see. That sounds like a really cool project. I think it's really sentimental and it makes me think I want to restore a car with my son. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought it was interesting to hear, to hear Mike talk about sports stuff. Uh, I have no um, uh, very little inclination to, um, you know, anything of sports stuff is really not uh, very interesting to me. However, um, all of our classes do get to hear about how, um, you know, in my 50s, Mike broke my hip. Uh, actually broke my femur. Oh, wow. Um, What's the story? Yeah, please yeah. share. <laughs> um, he, one of the, uh, let's get out of uh, sitting around and having a uh, conversation kind of uh, meeting. Uh, he got us to the, go to the local curling club. Oh, where the curling. president there taught us how it was that the curling club here in Fort Wayne became a project. So, yes, the Olympics people out there sweeping the ice with brooms. Uh, <laughs> there is a curling club here in uh, Fort Wayne. It is uh, truly a big deal. It's um, not something that, uh, well, we have people who come down from Canada to play on the, on the ice here in Fort Wayne. Uh, because the ice itself is so completely different than hockey ice. The way it's built, the way it's maintained, it's truly, truly different. So I learned all this stuff because Mike got us out of uh, sitting and having a monthly dinner meeting. We went out and uh, this man taught us, told us how it was that they created the club, why he created the club, how building the facility was a project, and uh, you know the cycle of maintaining uh, membership uh, was a project for him. And then they sent us out on the ice to go um, mess around with the ice for, you know, a half hour. All right, so I see where this us. is going. Yeah, you do, don't you? Yeah. Do. Except, no, the cool thing oh. about that was is I shot a rock, went through the house, he I shot a it. rock, and it he didn't go it. all the way across. And I was like, you know, somewhere in between these two, I could actually do this sport thing. This is kind of fun. Mike, what was your experience that night playing sports? I couldn't sports? stand up. <laughs> and, and it's and it's really funny, okay, because if you see curling in the Olympics, right, you're like, oh, this is the most easy thing in the world. Okay, background on me. I was uh, an all-city soccer player. I was an all-city football player. I was on scholarship at Western Michigan University for a year until I quit playing football, okay, back in the early 80s. So, I mean, I was, I'm pretty, I was a pretty decent athlete, you know, many, many moons ago. I could not stand up on the ice. I, I could I, I, I had I was trying to sweep things. I couldn't do it. I would sweep and go the broom would go one way, I would go the other way. You and gotta I'm like, curl and I'm, not, I'm not doing this. I don't like this game. And and Bruce, Bruce is not an athlete. Admittedly, he's he's gonna tell you I'm not an athlete, but you know what? He's a curling genius. He's a savant. <laughs> Right. So he's like, he, he knows how to do all. He could make the stone curl. I couldn't. It stone went straight. <laughs> you know, so I wish I was half the curler. He, you know, was trying to think that I am. Yeah. But uh, so, so I enjoyed he, the sport. He enjoyed the sport so much that he joined the club and you started to play. So then after playing a few seasons, yes, I ended up falling on the ice because as he had discovered early on ice is slick but you know we spend <laughs> <laughs> we, we spend every winter walking around slick. ice around here you'd think we'd know but uh yeah. and and the ice is actually not as slick as like hockey ice it's made to actually have a pebbled texture to it so anyhow oh. i did manage to fall and i didn't want to burn the stone if you touch it you burn the stone and it's out of play so i really contorted myself into a great angle and i managed to put all my weight down on my hip and uh yes i uh broke a bone oh, and man. Uh, but you fell around the stone yeah, yeah, no, I burned it and you know I burned hospital. it anyhow. Oh, you <laughs> burned it anyhow. It was a good so, effort. Next time I think I will just go ahead and fall. Burn the stone. Burn the stone. <laughs> yeah. But wow. I ended up actually finding a sport that I liked. I learned uh 
the, the difference in the way the ice is made to me is something that hardly anybody ever sees or hear anything about. Uh, and that to me was fascinating. And the fact that I found uh, people who uh, I like are, are nice to me when I go out there and I don't do a good job with a sport. <laughs> and uh, it's a great club of people. And so uh, that's another one of those things that if I hadn't been a project manager and uh, networking with other project managers, I, wouldn't, I still wouldn't know that there was a curling club here in Fort Wayne. Wow, that's a really cool story, and I like how you tied it back into project management. At the... I'm glad he broke my boat. <laughs> <laughs> Even I'm if sure he that... wasn't there at all, you know, I still blame him because I wouldn't have known about curling if not for Mike. I sense zero resentment there. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, it only hurts when he laughs, right? <laughs> there you go. Yeah. You go. Every step of every day, I think of Mike. <laughs> no. Uh, in closing, I just I have one more question, um, and it's sort of on the fly. What is, what do you think there is a project that needs to be done? Well, I think everyone should be chipping into my retirement program. <laughs> okay. That could be a big project. <laughs> Actually, I, I would almost like it when I look around Fort Wayne, I just think that uh, I'd like to see one project in that is that everyone get a better handle as to what project management is because there's so much going on that you don't realize is a project or that you are managing a project or that you're part of a project. But when you see the things that are going on downtown in Fort Wayne, I can't believe that a, okay, I'll say city, not a town of this size has so many things going on, you know, starting off with the, what happened at the riverfront with Promenade Park to mm -hmm. what's going on at GE, all the stuff that's going on. It's just amazing to me how many projects are already underway in yeah. a city of this size. Lots of multi So I can't say we need to build one more. I just, <laughs> we, let's keep building what we're doing because we're on an amazing trajectory here. Yeah. Okay. What would you fix? <laughs> you know, I, I to be to be fair, one of the things that we had talked about doing with our chapter, right, this Northeast Indiana chapter of PMI, is we had talked about doing something like more give back to the community. Um, you know, we bandied about things like let's 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 do a blood drive, uh, let's let's do this, let's do that. How about a scholarship? You know, so all of these things we've been kind of batting around. But one of the things that really resonated with me was that Habitat for Humanity idea, and I think in not just this community, but I think all throughout the America right now. I mean, housing is at such a premium, right? And 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 the opportunity for for young folks to actually realize that American dream and to have an opportunity to own their own property or to have a home, that's exciting stuff, right? I mean, and I think that there needs to be more equity in housing, so maybe we should build some more houses. Maybe we should work on doing something like Habitat for Humanity and make, and make a, a, a more of a blanket opportunity. And wh what better place to start than a, a lovely place like Fort Wayne? Gotta tell you. I wasn't born here, I wasn't raised here, but I've lived here for about mm, 18 years. And I've gotta say, I, I love the fact that the traffic is non-existent. And if you think you've got traffic here, trust me, move to Detroit, visit Chicago, go to DC, <laughs> okay? <laughs> These are places that have traffic. But, but this place, it's been a wonderful, wonderful ride for me here. And it's not just the different places that I've worked. I really like this community. And in terms of a project, what better way to get people to be here and to, to stay here than to make housing more affordable, more available, you know? So, I, I, so that, that, that resonates with me. I think if there is a way that we could follow on with some of the cool capital improvement projects that you mentioned, Bruce, but actually have opportunities where it's not just apartment living or rental living, but it's something that's a little more all-encompassing. I, I know my... It's just, just, it's just, it's just. It's the more noble it's, project. He said yeah. it had to be more noble. Than what I came <laughs> with. No, but you had to make up for breaking your hip. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Both so, of you guys had some great projects. I think that would be really cool. Like, hey, like, sign up for your class and build a house in six weeks or something. It's we're excited. Well. We're excited. <laughs> well, we're excited to actually start doing things like that. And and every time that I see one of the local TV stations show, you know, folks getting out and doing something like that, we, I'm I'm like, you know, we our chapter really needs to do that. So so yeah, that that resonates with me. That would be something. That would be a nice gift back. Yeah. Um, I want to thank you guys both for being here, Bruce and Mike. Um, your class will be starting project management certificate program in April. Um, so you can sign up now, um, just go online and sign up, uh, spaces are limited and it sounds like the opportunities are endless. 
So uh, with project management. So thanks again, guys, for for joining us. And um, you're welcome. Thank you it for was having our us. pleasure. Yeah, thank you. We'll have to have you back again soon. I want to hear about how some of these projects wrap up. All right, your glass. Okay. <laughs> All right, thanks. Thank you.